Meta has officially announced the launch of Llama 2. It's an updated, more powerful, still open, and now commercially available version of their large language model and represents not only a significant competitor to GPT and BARD, but is also flaring up significant conversations about the risks and opportunities of open source AI. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Yesterday, Meta crushed the rest of the news of the week when they announced their much-anticipated Llama 2. There were a number of big parts of this announcement. The first is that Llama 2 remains an open source approach to LLMs. The second is that it's free not only for research, but for commercial use. A third is that Meta is deepening a partnership with Microsoft through which developers using the Azure cloud will be able to natively access Llama. And finally, there is a huge emphasis on safety, which makes sense given the controversy around whether AI should be open sourced at all. Before we get into Llama 2, let's go back and actually look at Llama 1, because it's had a pretty important role in the development of this space over the last six months. Now, going back to Llama 1, in March, it was released as an open source package, although it wasn't complete. Basically, the weights in the model weren't included. However, within about a week of announcing it, the full model was leaked online, and almost immediately, people were concerned about the implications. Jeffrey Ladish, who we'll hear from again later in the show, said, Get ready for loads of personalized spam and phishing attempts. Open sourcing these models was a terrible idea. Now, while some of the more dire warnings about scams and attacks might not have been borne out quite yet when it comes to that leak, that's not to say that there weren't serious implications for how Llama's open model being available would impact the development of the AI space. In May, another leak, this time from someone inside Google, argued that the real competitor for Google and OpenAI was not another big company developing a model based on huge amounts of training data, but instead was the insurgency coming from the open source ranks. The piece starts, we've done a lot of looking over our shoulders at OpenAI. Who will cross the next milestone? What will the next move be? But the uncomfortable truth is we aren't positioned to win this arms race and neither is OpenAI. While we've been squabbling, a third faction has been quietly eating our lunch. I'm talking, of course, about open source. Plainly put, they are lapping us. Things we consider major open problems are solved and in people's hands today. Now, the important part of this analysis for our story today comes in the what happened section. The anonymous author writes, at the beginning of March, the open source community got their hands on the first really capable foundation model as Meta's Llama was leaked to the public. It had no instruction or conversation tuning and no RLHF. Nonetheless, the community immediately understood the significance of what they had been given. A tremendous outpouring of innovation followed, with just days between major developments. Here we are barely a month later, and there are variants with instruction tuning, quantization, quality improvements, human evals, multimodality, RLHF, etc., etc., many of which build on each other. Now, the author also does talk about what feels to them like the irony of Facebook being the leader in this new environment. They write, Paradoxically, the one clear winner in all of this is Meta. Because the leaked model was theirs, they have effectively garnered an entire planet's worth of free labor. Since most open source innovation is happening on top of their architecture, there is nothing stopping them from directly incorporating it into their products. The value of owning the ecosystem cannot be overstated. Now, that letter came out in May, and importantly, we're now, a couple months later, seeing the impacts in a big way. If you're a regular listener, you will have heard me read Sam Hogan's big essay tweet the other day, where he argued basically that AI was not the savior to the venture startup ecosystem that people had thought, because the two big winners were, on the one end of the spectrum, open source indie developers, and on the other end of the spectrum, big enterprise companies. Now, his argument for why the enterprises were doing better than anyone thought had a lot to do with these open source models. As a reminder, he wrote, Executives at enterprise companies are excited about AI, and they have been vocal about this from the beginning. This led a lot of founders and VCs to believe these companies would make good first customers. What the startups building for these companies failed to realize is just how aligned and savvy executives and the engineers they manage would be at quickly getting AI into production using open source tools. An engineering leader would rather spin up their own Langchain and Chroma infrastructure for free and build tech themselves than buy something from a new, unproven startup. So this was the situation heading into the last week, and lots and lots of rumors had been swirling that Llama 2 was on the way, and that this time it would come with a license ready for commercial use. Well, as of yesterday, Llama 2 is here. It is indeed ready for commercial use. It picked up an interesting partner in Microsoft, and it's generating some serious discussion around issues of open source AI. Let's talk first about how Llama compares to other open source models. TLDR is its way out ahead. For those of you who are listening, on the screen, I'm showing a chart that shows benchmark comparisons of Llama 2, both its 7 billion parameter version and its 13 billion parameter version, outcompeting many other open source LLMs. Now, there's also a chart that they shared in the white paper that shows how Llama 2 compares in various benchmarks to other commercially available models like GPT 3.5, GPT 4, POM, and POM 2L. 
While Llama remains pretty meaningfully behind GPT-4 as a for example, it's coming up pretty close to the levels of GPT-3.5. What's more, as NVIDIA's Dr. Jim Fan points out, model tests that involved humans suggested that Llama performed even better. Jim writes, Meta's team did a human study on 4K prompts to evaluate Llama 2's helpfulness. They use win rate as a metric to compare models in similar spirit as the Vicuna benchmark. 70 billion parameter model roughly ties with GPT 3.5 and performs noticeably stronger than Falcon, MPT, and Vicuna. I trust these real human ratings more than academic benchmarks because they typically capture the the in-the-wild vibe better. Now, in that same tweet, Jim also points out that Llama 2 is not yet at the GPT 3.5 level and that the big thing holding its back is its coding abilities. Speaking of quirky human tests, Professor Ethan Mollick from Wharton writes, Out of the box, Llama 2 beats Bard at the insane memo test. Write a corporate memo in a serious style explaining and justifying the following points. One, the floor is now lava. Two, promotion will be by staring contests. Three, we have merged with a hive of bees. The queen is your new CTO. Now, as we mentioned, in terms of upgrades from Llama 1, the biggest one is the commercial availability. If you go back and look at how the developer community was discussing and talking about the first iteration of Llama, a lot of it was about trying to assess whether Meta would actually sue if people used it for commercial products. For example, this Hacker News post says, Can Llama weights be used for commercial products? And the top-rated comments is all about the difference between what the terms literally say, which did exclude commercial use, versus what they would actually do because the optics of suing might be terrible. Well, that has now been resolved as this model, again, is available for commercial use. And importantly, again, from a commercial standpoint, Meta isn't charging directly for its usage. They'll make money by selling the program as a paid hosted service through various cloud computing partners. That's, for example, where Microsoft comes in. Now, there are a couple commercial limitations to note. The terms prevent Llama 2's data or output from being used to train other LLMs. And second, if the monthly active users of the product that is using Llama 2 exceed 700 million users, Llama is requiring a special commercial license. Obviously, there's a very small handful of companies for whom that would apply. Now, going back to Microsoft for a moment, people were fairly surprised by this announcement featuring Microsoft so prominently. Matt Wolf writes, So Microsoft has partnered with OpenAI on their closed-source LLM, and now they're partnering with Meta to release an open-source LLM with Llama 2? I love that things are moving towards more open-source. I'm just really confused by where Microsoft is going with all this. For market observers, though, the answer is pretty clear. Barron's writes yesterday, Microsoft shows investors the money from AI. Why its meta deal threatens Google. The piece starts, Microsoft has just closed the gap between the hype and the reality when it comes to AI. The tech giant unveiled its plan to monetize the technology Tuesday, answering a key question surrounding the recent AI stock boom. The company plans to charge businesses $30 a month for its artificial intelligence-powered Microsoft Office apps. In response to these updates, yesterday Microsoft stock hit an all-time high. Now, another big emphasis of the announcement of Llama 2 was around its approach to safety. Lewis Martin tweets, I am proud to have led the safety effort behind Llama 2. Our fine-tuned models are deemed safer and more helpful compared to other open and closed source models such as ChatGPT. Safety was evaluated by human annotators on a set of 2K adversarial prompts. We improved the safety of our models using supervised fine-tuning, RLHF, context distillation, and continuous red teaming. In particular, we noticed that RLHF makes our model more robust on the long tail of adversarial prompts. Thanks to context distillation, we have improved our model's responses to adversarial prompts. We first generate answers by prefixing a prompt with safety guidelines, then fine-tune the model on these safe responses without these guidelines. We proactively test our model's weaknesses with continuous red teaming. We conducted a series of red teaming events with various teams of over 350 people, including domain experts. They also included individuals representative of a variety of demographic groups. One thing that many have noticed is that Meta took a slightly different approach to dealing with these safety issues by actually training Llama with two separate reward models. One was based on its helpfulness and one was based on its safety. This allowed them to have more fine control over how the model should respond in different contexts and scenarios. Now that said, some saw the very release of information, particularly the weights of the model, as undermining all of this focused on safety. Stanford PhD student Chris Cundy writes, I appreciate all the emphasis on safety in the Llama 2 paper, but I'm not sure how that squares with releasing the weights. If I want Crime Llama for effective phishing emails, can I just fine-tune to remove safety guardrails? Jeffrey Ladish said something similar. If you have access to the weights, you can fine-tune away any safety controls. And this gets us to the discussion of open source more broadly. On the one hand, it's hard to deny how much Llama 2 advances the open source LLM ecosystem. Nathan Lambert wrote on his substack, quote, The base model seems very strong beyond GPT-3, and the fine-tuned chat models seem to be on the same level as ChatGPT. It is a huge leap forward for open source and a huge blow to the closed source and a huge blow to closed source providers as using this model will offer way more customizability and way lower cost for most companies. 
Remember what we had discussed before, how enterprises had changed the way that they engaged with AI because of the availability of this type of open source model. And indeed, a lot of the mainstream media coverage focused on the risks of open sourcing. The Washington Post writes, Facebook to make its AI free to use, expanding access to powerful tech. The social media giant is doubling down on its open source approach, potentially boosting competition, while also raising the risks of malicious actors using the tech. From the Post, quote, The decision will deepen the divide forming in the tech world over whether to make new AI tech open source or not. Google and OpenAI have rejected full transparency, citing the risks of bad actors using their tech or developing it in ways that increase risks to people. Facebook and a group of startups, including Hugging Face and Stability AI, have said open source is key to making sure the powerful new technology doesn't further entrench the tech giants and stifle competition. The Post also writes, earlier this year, Meta released Llama to a select group of researchers only for the model to be leaked and later used for applications ranging from drug discovery to sexually explicit chatbots. Last month, Senators Richard Blumenthal and Josh Hawley wrote to Zuckerberg arguing that in the short time generative artificial intelligence applications have become more widely available, they have already been misused for problematic content, from pornographic deepfakes to malware and phishing campaigns. Now, Meta itself has pushed back on this idea. Nick Clegg, who is the president of global affairs at Meta and is a former UK deputy prime minister, said on BBC4 yesterday, My view is that the hype has somewhat run ahead of the technology. I think a lot of the existential warnings relate to models that don't currently exist, so-called super-intelligent, super-powerful AI models. The vision where AI develops an autonomy and agency on its own, where it can think for itself and reproduce itself. The models that we're open-sourcing are far, far, far short of that. In fact, in many ways, they're quite stupid. Now, it's pretty clear that the release of Llama 2 sets up this open-source debate to move even more into the mainstream. A quick search on Twitter for Llama and Open will see just how much disagreement there is even within the often mono-thinking Silicon Valley tech culture. However, for now, for most developers, those debates can wait because they have an incredibly powerful new tool and they're outbuilding the next wave of AI innovation. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. If you're enjoying this and you're watching, please go listen to the podcast. If you're listening to this, go check out the YouTube. You can get information about everywhere this content lives at breakdown.network. And until next time, peace.